Hello friends, this video on Life Processes Part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about the circulatory mediums. So we have spoken about the blood vessels. We have spoken about the pumping organ that is heart. So what is left? We are yet left to talk about the circulating medium that is blood and lymph. So let us start our discussion with blood. What is blood? It is the circulatory medium. That means it is the fluid which actually carries the substances from one place to another. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. Blood is actually 78% of water and only 22% of solids. So it has so much of water in it. It connects different systems of the body by transporting gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different body parts. So in this picture you can see that how blood is able to connect between the dis be even between the distant parts of the body. Now this blood has many components. There are different types of components present inside the blood. So let us quickly discuss about the different components of blood. The first component is the plasma or sometimes also known as the blood plasma. What is this? This is the extracellular matrix. That means the fluid like uh, thing which fills the blood is known as the blood plasma. It is fluid matrix on which the blood cells are embedded. So blood is nothing but a tissue. So any tissue is made up of cells. So blood is also made up of blood cells. So the blood actually consists of a fluid like structure on which the blood cells are embedded. So this fluid like structure is called blood plasma and on this blood plasma are the blood cells embedded. So what are the cells embedded in this matrix? That means what are the blood cells which we are talking about? We have RBC also known as red blood cells. These are small cells without a nucleus. They do not, these cells do not have a nucleus. They carry oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body. So that is the main function of RBC. RBC also contains the respiratory pigment called hemoglobin which has affinity for oxygen. And that is also a reason. This hemoglobin plays a very important role. Hemoglobin is the pigment because of which the color of the RBCs is red. And that is why the blood is red in color. So hemoglobin is the pigment which gives red color to the blood. Hemoglobin also has a special affinity for oxygen. Affinity means special attraction or special love for oxygen. So uh, hemoglobin will always try to attract oxygen. So even if the oxygen is dissolved in water, hemoglobin will try to extract that oxygen out of it. So because of the presence of hemoglobin, red blood cells will extract oxygen and it will transport it from lungs to different parts of the body. Also these red blood cells are very small in size which again helps them to transport to different and distant parts of the body. Their small size enables them to travel in extremely thin capillaries. Let us look at the next component that is WBC or white blood cells. The name itself says that they are no more white in color. They are nucleated cells. They have nucleus. They help fight infection and builds the immune system. As I told before also, these white blood cells, they are the soldiers of our body. So whenever there is some kind of infection inside our body, they try to fight with that infection. And if the immune system is strong enough, they many a times they win over. And when the WBCs win, we do not fall ill. So it is a kind of internal protection for our body. So that is the main function of the WBCs. They live for three to four days in human body. So they live for only three to four days and after that they die, but they again generate. So they get generated very quickly and their uh, lifespan is also very short. So here in this picture, you can see the different types of WBC cells, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocyte, monocyte. These are the different types of the blood cells. We will, just, you, we will talk about the detail of these cells in our higher classes. So let us look at the third component that is the blood platelets. What are platelets? They are smaller in size. They help in blood clotting. So platelets play a very important role actually in the survival of living beings. Have you ever thought what happens when we get injured? 
when you get you hurt yourself by a knife or any sharp object what happens you start bleeding now does it happen that the blood keeps on flowing in indefinite for the indefinite period of time that doesn't happen blood buds blood starts flowing and after some time it stops why does it stop and what would happen if it doesn't stop if the blood doesn't stop flowing gradually all the blood present inside our body will get flown outside and this excessive bleeding will cause death of that person so this way we get injured every now and then so just imagine how people would have been able to survive if the bleeding would have not stopped so blood platelets play a very important role in controlling this excessive bleeding so what does it do the blood clot formed which plugs the injury whenever we get injured so there is a rupture somewhere the blood vessel gets ruptured somewhere so that leakage is actually filled up by a blood clot which is formed by the platelets so that leakage is filled and therefore the blood leakage is also checked so leakage would also cause loss of pressure so whenever there is a leakage in a tube let us suppose blood is flowing through a tube there is a leak in the tube so the high pressure of the blood which was there initially will get affected because now there is a leakage so this loss of pressure will also affect the efficiency of the pumping system as a whole because this heart heart acts as a pumping organ why is it able to act as a pumping organ or why is the blood actually flowing from one place to another that is because of the difference in pressure and who maintains that pressure or who maintains that high pressure of the blood the end the fact that the blood is enclosed inside blood vessels that maintains the high pressure right so now if the blood vessel get leaked somewhere that pressure is reduced if that pressure is reduced the efficiency or the functioning of the entire pumping system will get affected so platelets play a very important role by helping in blood clotting so this was all about blood so let us talk about the other circulatory medium that is the lymph so what is lymph it is the tissue fluid or the interstitial fluid as i said inside every organism there are two types of fluid one is the blood which is red in color and the other one is the tissue fluid or the interstitial fluid it is colorless it is it does not have any color now as i mentioned in open circulatory system this lymph and the blood are mixed together they are not separated from each other but in closed circulatory system they are completely separated from each other blood is enclosed in the blood vessels and lymph is present in the body cavities now from where does this lymph get collected now through the pores in the walls of the capillaries the capillaries also have thin walls and those walls also have small pores so through those pores some amount of plasma proteins and blood cells escape into the intercellular spaces and these together constitute the lymph so lymph so now if you look at this figure you can see how it shows the lymph lymphatic system so this lymph when compared to the blood it contains less proteins when compared to the blood plasma because the blood plasma is also the fluid matter of the blood and this lymph is also the fluid matter it is in fact it is the it is some substances which come from the blood plasma itself right as i mentioned just now that through the pores of in the walls of the capillary some amount of plasma proteins and blood will escape out into the intercellular spaces and they will form the lymph so it is very obvious that they will contain lesser proteins than what is contained in the blood plasma so in lymph it is unidirectional flow from tissues to the heart like blood flows from both direction blood flows from heart to different parts of the body blood also flows from different parts of the body to the heart but in case of lymph it is a unidirectional flow that it only flows from the tissues to the heart so what is the function of lymph lymph will actually collect all the proteins blood cells and the plasma which enters into the intercellular spaces and then it will take all these things and take it to the heart so it helps in the transport of absorbed fat from intestine to the blood so as the fat digestion which takes place in the intestine it will take it to the blood the excess fluid from the extracellular space back to the blood now the lymphs also this fluid lymph forms the lymphatic capillaries like how we have the blood capillaries similarly we have lymphatic capillaries and these lymphatic capillaries again form the lymph vessels 
and these lymph vessels then join into the veins. So here you can look at this picture. This is the arteriole. So from the arteriole, we have these structures. This, this is the arteriole and this is the venule. The arteriole is red in color carrying oxygenated blood. Venule is blue in color carrying the deoxygenated blood. Right? And where is the tissue fluid or the lymph? This is the lymph, the green colored structure. So these are the lymph vessels. So if you see here, these thinner structures are the lymph capillaries and the lymph capillaries form together the lymphatic vessels and the lymphatic vessels join into the veins. These are the venules and these venules will in turn form the veins. Right? And these are the tissue cells. So here you can see the cells, right? These are the cells and the spaces between the tissue cells is known as the tissue spaces. So in this tissue spaces flows the lymph. Clear? So this is all about the circulatory system in human beings and we also talked about the circulatory system in other animals like reptiles, amphibians as well as fishes. So now before we go ahead, let us quickly look at the differences between blood and lymph. The first difference is blood, which is the, the, the very obvious difference that is blood is red in color and lymph is colorless. Blood flows very rapidly, whereas lymph flows slowly. Because, why does blood flow so rapidly? Because blood is enclosed inside the blood vessels and the flow of blood is controlled by a pumping organ that is heart. So because of that, the blood pressure is very high and due to this high pressure, they flow rapidly. Blood flows from heart to different body parts and also from different body parts to the heart. So the flow is bidirectional. But in case of lymph, the flow is unidirectional. They flow only from the tissues to the heart. The vice versa flow is absent. Blood contains more proteins. Lymph contains lesser proteins because lymph is formed by some portion of the blood plasma and blood cells. Blood consists of plasma, RBC, WBC and platelets. Lymph consists of plasma and lymphocytes. The cells of the lymph are called lymphocytes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.